Hi folks, it is time to build up another one kilowatt hour pack using my small blocks uh, pack design. Uh, I'll be adding each of these blocks in parallel with the blocks from the first kilowatt hour pack that I made so that they will be, uh, it'll end up being a 7S48P pack for a total of 2 kilowatt hours. I'm going to fill these new small blocks with the cells out of the power shelf. So these are the cells that have been through the whole Schwankme sort procedure. So I know that they are as well balanced as they could possibly be. And I've been running those for a week or so now, I've been monitoring them, and they really are nicely uh, in sync. So when I wire this all up to something that does have a BMS, it will not have to work very hard to keep the, these in balance, which is a good thing. And here's John and I soldering up the small blocks. Uh, the first six of them, anyway, I ran out of connectors. So I had to wait an extra couple of days before I could finish off the last one. So you can see I've made six, I've finished six already. And I'll step you through the last one just to give you a bit more detail. Um, and just to reiterate, these um, 3D printed battery holders are available on Thingiverse for you to copy and print and redesign and do whatever you like to them. Uh, please do feel free to um, steal this design, do whatever you like. Uh, I've also got links to the original Tinkercad um, CAD file slash page um, so you can disassemble it and rearrange it and do whatever you like if you haven't seen these before uh, I've got a, um, 12 pairs of cells that just slot into there quite nicely um, I print 7 in black, 7 in red this is the negative side, that's the positive side um, and then I've got um, a slot in the top or the bottom, depending on where you are, um, so that you can slide in some strapping. And um, I'll walk you through the process nice and slow. Um, what I do is take a long piece of strapping, bend it in half, and then solder in, uh, in this, in the loop. You don't need both sides. For many situations, one side would be fine. Um, but I kind of like having two. I'll get a slight improvement in conductivity doing it this way. So, um, I line it up like that, grab it there, and heat this, heat this up a good amount. And when it's hot enough, it will flow around quite nicely. I'll show you a little bit closer. Um, yeah, you can see it's flowed quite nicely. Yeah, a bit too much solder there, but not too bad.
good. So that's done. And slide that in there. And then I'll just put some gloves on so I don't burn myself because it's still a bit warm. Tuck that in there. Now I give myself a bit of extra um, strapping on the end which I fold over just in case I need to have something come off the other end. Um, I haven't worked out any scenario where I do need that yet but I might so I might as well. Um, and it does mean um, bending it over means that the, there's no way that can move around. Um, right, so I'll do the next one. Where's my... Uh, so I just crimp it so that the strapping gives it a good snug fit. That's good. There we go. And we'll get that there. And that should do. Give it plenty of heat. That's good. Good. So, take that away, bring ourselves back here, and Slide that in there. Um, now, depending on how good your 3D printer is, you may have trouble sliding that in. Um, and I found I had to raise the temperature on my 3D printer a bit to get a really good print. Um, but once I got that sorted, it was all good. So that is that. All pretty nice. You need to make sure you're pointing your connector the right way for however you're going to um, wire up your harness, and that's the right way for me. Next comes the fuses. So uh, I'm using this 0.2 millimeter wire that my friend John found in his junk which I've previously tested and established that it um, will carry um, two or three amps reasonably and it will blow somewhere around five amps um, so I'm using that as my fuse uh, on the red positive side and then on the bottom I'm using this old um, old earth wire um, that I know is thicker than the fuse wire so it is still thin enough that it's nice and easy to solder but it will not blow should there be a problem the fuse side will blow and because I have these mounted on the wall facing 
this way, if a fuse blows, I'm more likely to see it than um, if a fuse on the back went. That would be annoying. So I will do uh, grab myself a piece of wire, and I have um, this worked out that this wire benefits from a quick run through a piece of sandpaper which just um, makes it easier to solder. Um, it just rubs off any oxidization that might have occurred. So next comes a bit of um, flux on the bus bar and on the joining strapping. Then I'll pre-solder them all those. Oh, I should have got my fan working. I had it working earlier, but I put it away. This is a 40, 48 watt soldering iron, but even my um, wimpy 20 watt soldering iron can solder onto these strapping Um, crossbars quite easily. Okay. So, here we go. Now, this is pretty hard to film because it's so ridiculously thin. I'll zoom in again and you may or may not be able to see what the hell's going on. Wait for that to solidify and do a nice wee loop to give it some slack. Solder that and I loop up that way. And then down. One. Um, so this is a slightly boring task. It's pretty hard to add anything more to the commentary because it's just incredibly repetitive. But it doesn't take too long to do. So a bit of sandpaper, run that through, just makes it much easier to solder. You could do the sandpaper trick on enameled wire as well, which would help. Okay, so that's one side done. That's all done. Let's do the other side. So switching to the thicker wire this time.
So normally the negative side on these cells is really hard to solder to because it's such a massive heat sink. Um, the outside casing goes from the negative all the way down and uh, so you need a super grunty, well you need a pretty good soldering iron to solder directly onto a, the bottom of a, an 18650. But by soldering onto these strappings in the middle, it's way easier. Alright, done. So that's good. And that's good. Alright, let's zoom out. So I have one, two, three, four. Seven all ready to go on the wall. Okay. Lovely. Sorted. Next step will be to wire up the connecting harness, but that's enough for now. Thanks for watching. Cheers.